Okay, uh, I'm here in Quarry House. Uh, I'm here with this couple. They're going to introduce themselves and talk to us about safe wards. Off you go. Who's going to go first? I'll go first. I'm Faye. I'm a staff nurse at PQ in Stafford, uh, where we've implemented safe wards. And I'm Gary. I'm the service lead for the management of violence aggression in the same trust. Okay, so how has the uh, implementation of safe wards gone on your PQ, Faye? Um, we started implementing, I think it's towards the end of last August, so almost a year and now. Um, we have got uh, various champions for the different modules. Um, we've tended to take it a couple of weeks at a time, months in fact for some. Um, we've had positive outcomes from it. Uh, the modules are easy to implement, some are easier than others um, because it's just uh, it's easier to suppose to teach your staff about and uh, ask them to change their practice. Some of the harder ones is when you are trying to involve patients within a peak environment um, because obviously um, they're not very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but we've had very positive outcomes so far. Okay. And Gary, what have you noticed as the local trainer? Well, I've noticed that um, within the training we already offer, um, a lot of the modules actually, almost by design, actually fit in with what we're trying to achieve within training. So especially things like the reassurance, the soft words, talk even the talk down, because we're very much focused on the idea that we want to move away from physical skills-based training to a much more patient-centred, de-escalatory model. So by, by implementing what we've done with our DMI model, actually it lends itself to the implementation of safe wards. Yeah. So it felt like some of the staff already had some skills around it, which as, as Faye has yeah. just alluded to, it helps then when you want to start discussing some of the modules around safe wards. Yeah. And yeah. those staff where you can see they're, it's evident that they're, they've got certain uh, higher skill set than others, those are the staff that we've tried to choose as champions. Um, for example, our uh, talk down champion, is uh, Des and he's one of our DMI trainers, so it links in nicely with his the, the DMI approach that they use and yeah. um, sharing his knowledge and skills with the other staff. So. Yeah, Des is very good anyway. He's he? very good at very good engagement. Oh, so, so everything's been terrifically smooth on your ward, and Safe Wars implementation has been easy without any challenges. No, no, uh -huh. not at all. Uh, with any change, people were. Uh, there's resistance to change. People don't always feel safe uh, in uh, new approaches. Um, where possible, we've tried to educate the staff um, by doing little teaching sessions of uh, safe wards. We've visited other wards um, throughout the country. We've been to um, Bangor, we've been to Dorset, and we may get to go to Holland at the end of the year uh, to share good practice. And we've tried to involve staff who may have felt a bit more resistant to the change or a bit unsafe in the change um, and they've come along too with us um, which has helped um, so it's just there has been resistance um, but it's about again supporting the staff to feel safe within the change and trying to encourage the skill set to be developed so that they feel comfortable um, with this approach. Yeah. And what we have done uh, across the Norbury Ward is try to produce some evidence base that actually it is having a, a positive effect so once you can tell staff you know things like the amount of restrictive practices has reduced yeah. therefore improving the safety of staff and, and patient groups and then things like the amount of conflict so we can measure that through some things like the adverse event reporting system so the the amount of non-physical assaults which you know so a bit around conflict has reduced um, not not massively but I think the severity of it has actually reduced yeah you know, perhaps the amount of like incidents time. themselves and um, I think some of the feedback from staff. Time of yeah. restraint and things like that. Yeah, so when you put the severity versus likelihood, it has, it has a, had a, quite a big effect on that, I think, really. And like you say, so a lot of the patients are incredibly unwell, so to have that effect on acute young well patients is, is positive, I think. Were any of the interventions more challenging than others to uh, think, get into practice? Um, some of the bigger modules, like the clear and mutual expectations, that because we tried to do a bit of uh, a bit of work before we implemented that in terms of what the staff feel that what are the rules and um, obviously there's di discrepancies and it's about trying to get that consistency across the team um, to try and help with that module. So we did a bit of work first about what what the staff felt were rules and tried to uh, categorise them into fixed rules, soft rules because 
in certain in a particular environment there are certain areas that you can't exclude you, you can't not have um, these restrictive interventions at times but um, where possible it was about reducing it minimizing everything um, to keep everybody safe in this right approach really Okay, so uh, um, there's a few people been asking uh, on Facebook recently, what would they say to their uh, chief executives or directors of nursing to uh, persuade them to implement safe wards? What, what would you advise to nurses in that position who want to propose safe wards to their chief execs and directors of nursing? Be, they need to be looking at the forums, they need to be looking at the, the evidence on the safe wards pages, the, the, how it's global. And the positive feedback that you're getting from the staff teams, that, that you know. And I don't think, you know, most, certainly I have conversations with our chief executive and director of nursing around this stuff. And, uh, you know, you, you, you can't argue really with the evidence base. Like, like you said, Lennon's 20, 20 years behind it. E even just the economic argument. And I think trusts are now starting to look at, well, what's the economics behind these restrictive practices, reduction strategies? It's not just about quality, but it's also about safety, it's about reputation, it's about clinical risk, but also it's about, well, we live in difficult economic times, what's the economic argument for implementing all this stuff? And I think if you can prove that, um, then you know, most chief executives, most directors of nursing, certainly director of finance, you'll be looking to go, what are we waiting for? <laughs> Okay, for just to uh, finish off now, what's the best thing? Uh, what's the best thing you've seen as an impact of introducing safe wards? I think a change in culture, positive change in culture within the team, um, the language that's used, the way we speak about our patients. You know, that they're the reason why we're there. So, just that positive change in culture. Okay, and Gary. I think for me, it's, um, because I've actually been working clinically on, on Norbury as well, um, I, I think for me it's the almost the move from it's not just about training in a, a classroom, it's about how does that get implemented on the ward, so to actually see staff work into a methodology yeah. um, and that's consistent and you know, you know, there's reason, rationale behind it and you can see the evidence of that through care plans, advanced statements, yeah. and, then, and, yeah, and that's all with, to the good, I think. Within the case notes as well, people uh, people document now, um, using soft words approach, da -da -da -da, was able to de-escalate the yeah. situation, which is really good. Yeah. They're also even writing care plans in the first yeah. person, aren't they? Yeah, so, right. you know, Fred, you said you would want this in, within your care plan, oh, no, so sorry. this is what we're looking at. OK, thank you very much, pair of you, for your time and for being willing to star in a YouTube video. <laughs>